Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is a presentation on MacArthur House at Genesee Country Village and Museum. I wanted to take this opportunity to bring you through a house that generally isn't open to the public and that currently is not interpreted by a staff member. So this is MacArthur House. I hope you enjoy it. To start, MacArthur House was built in 1834 in York, New York. The style of architecture that you're seeing is considered a salt box style house. Uh, it was an architectural style that was popularized in New England and eventually brought west. It lent itself to bearing the burden of northeastern winters with its front roof line being very steep and the back portion of the house sloping. Um, that is where the kitchen and pantry reside in that back portion and this characteristic actually developed out of the necessity for expansion generally these style houses uh, were expanded by putting up a temporary or semi-permanent lean-to uh, which generally house outdoor cooking space so naturally over time it developed into a permanent structure. On a broader basis, however, the house is considered a federal style. Although looking at the front facade of the structure, it's clear that it's not symmetrical, which is a characteristic that is generally seen in a federal style home. Uh, it's rather asymmetrical. The door is shifted to the left side of the house as opposed to having it centered with two identical windows flanking it on either side. Um, that is because it is, this is considered a half house. This term comes from the thought that whoever is building the house would be growing their business, growing their wealth, and would one day be able to construct the other half of the house, complementing and completing the symmetry of the structure and expanding it for its, their family. So the background of this house, as we walk through, is uh, in 1833, a young Duncan J. MacArthur moved to York, New York with his wife, Elizabeth, son, John, and a baby on the way. York was heavily settled by Scottish immigrants, and so the MacArthurs fit in almost immediately. With a small but growing family, Duncan MacArthur settled quickly. John McNabb was a local at the time and owned a sizable plot of land. He eventually sold approximately eight acres to MacArthur in 1835. So in that first year of settling in in 1833, it's a little unclear what the MacArthurs were doing, what their living situation was like. They either lived on the McNabb property or lived with another family within the area. But by 1834, the MacArthur house was ready for occupants. The MacArthurs welcomed their daughter, Isabel, in 1835, and later their son, James, in 1838. Duncan MacArthur was a tradesman and supported his family through his leatherworking skills. He established his own business as a boot and shoemaker in a small building near the family's home. Um, it it's also presumed that he was the area's harness maker and repairer, and considering that York was a rural farming community at the time, it was definitely a necessity for the locals to have someone who could do that. His business really flourished, and by 1854, he decided he wanted to move his business to the village of York, and therefore moved his family home as well. Um, when his sons reached adulthood, which by 1854 they would have, they became business partners with their father and the family just ended up moving to the center of York. They ended up selling the house, it exchanged hands a few times between the years, and in 1968 it was sold and moved to Genesee Country Village and Museum. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We really hope that you enjoyed this content. We would love to know if you'd like more of this style, so please let us know. Um, 
I hope everyone is happy and healthy and safe and look out for more content coming from us soon. Have a great day.